Here's an introduction to the idea of a tangent plane to a function of two variables. But first, I want to really briefly remind you of the formula for the tangent line to a curve for a function of one variable. So if we've got y equals f of x, and I've got an example of graphed up here, the function, uh, the formula isn't important here, and I pick a number, I pick an x value, and therefore a point on the curve that I want the tangent line at, we can call that a, uh, we're going to have a slightly different name for it in a second. Um, here I pick 3 fourths, just because it looked like a pretty good value to pick. And we want to find out the tangent equation of the tangent line. Okay. Well, that's going to have to do with how high this point is, that's f of a, and the slope, which of course is of course the derivative f prime of a. And it's a pretty simple formula. We just start with y equals f of a, which would just give us this height. And then we need to add something in that has the right slope, so it's got to be something like f prime of a times x, but it's got to die at x equals a so that it doesn't actually change this correct answer at x equals a. And so we just multiply by x minus a. That's one way to think about it. Another way to do it is um, through point slope. There's various other ways to think about it. Now I'm going to change the notation just a little bit. We sometimes use this in one variable, but it's going to be a little bit more systematic here. x naught here, or x sub 0, that's going to be the fixed value of x that we pick, the, the numerical value, not a variable, uh, to, to figure out what tangent line we're talking about. And that's always a convention, very standard convention, is you put a subscript on a variable, it's supposed to make it kind of fixed, kind of lock it down to be some special value of x. So that's just going to, just changing the notation a little bit. Now let's look at multivariables. Hmm. Tangent plane to a graph of a function of two variables. So let's spin this around a little bit. So this is a nice little hump. This is a, uh, it's a quadric. I picked a pretty simple equation. We'll, we'll do the equation in a minute, but I want to focus on the, the, um, the geometry first, the picture first. And I've graphed what looks certainly looks like a tangent plane. It's something that just touches the function at this point and is tangent to it. So that if I go in any direction, and the, and this is a key point. I'm going to talk about it a little in a minute. I should be, it should be true that if I go in any direction from this point on the surface and I look at how steep it is, then that's matched by as if I was a, as if I were going on the plane itself. Okay. And so in particular, if I go along one of the axes, this is, let's see, which axis, I'm not even sure which axis I'm on. Oh yeah. So this is the negative x-axis here, I think, I oh, know. Um, no, I got myself confused. Let me swing it around a little bit here. Okay, here's some negative axes. Let me swing it around so the positive axes are in front. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So here, uh, this is the positive x-axis. It doesn't label the axes very well in this program. And here's the positive y-axis. If I go along the, the x-axis, it looks like I'm going upward. It's going, coming towards me in this picture. It's coming upward. And so I've got to ha want to have something that has a positive slope along the x-axis. If I go in the at y direction, it's a lot less slopey, but you can see it should be going in the negative direction. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a linear function. We know that a plane should be graphed by just a linear function. z equals some number plus a number times x plus a number times y. And I'm just going to create the linear the coefficients so that it works to have the right behavior in the two variables. So let's go back here. And so I want to get z equals, well, first of all, I'm going to emulate what we did in the one variable case. So I'm going to call my point that I'm interested in x naught y naught. So let me just say this. This is to get the tangent plane equation at x naught y naught. Okay, so I'm going to give give it that value, and then I'm going to add in a multiple of x and a multiple of y. Well, you know what? That would screw me up. I'm going to have some mystery multiple of x minus x naught, and some mystery multiple of y minus y naught. That way, it will not screw me up. If I put in x equals x naught and y equals y naught, that's the point of tangency. Then I'll get the right value: z equals f of x naught y naught, the value of the function there. And I just need to know the mystery value. Now you can probably guess what these numbers are because, let's see, it's supposed to be something, this is supposed to be a plane, so that if I slice it, let's go back to the rotation one more time, 
if I slice it along a plane where, or a, a vertical plane with y constant, okay, or let, yeah, here's y, uh, no, this is x constant. If we're looking straight down the picture here, that's going to be this curve here is one of the slices of the, the graph with x constant and y variable. And that's going to be just a function of one variable. And this line in the plane right here is supposed to be the tangent line to that curve. If we look at it sideways, there's going to be a, any one of these curves is a function of y only. And I'm basically looking for a plane that if I restrict it to where x is x equal x, x naught, sorry, can't talk today, you should get the tangent line. OK, so that means when I let y be variable, when I let y be variable and x be constant, I should get something with the derivative, the slope, being the, the partial derivative. And so that's going to be, uh, there we go, d, uh, dz, dy. Now, if I let x be variable and y be constant, I should get a slice that gives me the partial derivative with respect to x. And so the partial derivatives come in in an exactly analogous way as the, the ordinary derivative came in in here. It's a really very simple formula. It's the kind of, and that's going to be a subtle issue in a minute. OK, I should scroll down too far. So that's going to be our formula. If you want, prefer the other notation, plus f sub, whoa, hello, f sub x of x naught. Why not? There's, it can get confusing here. Let me write it out. Um, we really should have two kinds of parentheses in mathematics. If I want to be really careful about this formula, I need to specify where I'm evaluating those partial derivatives. Like f sub x, that's a function of x and y. I need to tell you we only care about this number the value of that at x naught y naught. And that's times x minus x naught. So these parentheses, they're after a function name, so they're evaluate a function. And then this is just time. So I'm going to put in a little star here. You wouldn't usually do this, but I'm just going to put in a little multiplication symbol to indicate that's a number. It's a partial derivative as you're going in x. Then you multiply that by how much x is changing. You take the partial derivative in y, you multiply that by how much y is changing. OK. So here's the tricky thing. OK. This usually works, but not always. OK, and so you might be able to think, where, why would this fail? Well, we know from one variable calculus that derivatives don't always make sense. We can't always calculate derivatives, like absolute value of x, or um, you know, 1 over x at 0, or something like that. But there's a much more subtle issue. Even if the two partials exist, this might not work. That's a very subtle issue about, uh, mul about higher dimensional calculus, multidimensional calculus. Let me show you an example of that. Okay. Here's the tricky point. So here I've got a graph of um, a very funky function. I first put it in polar. It's r sine 2 theta. Z equals r sine 2 theta. So I take a point in the, the plane, and I don't express it in Cartesian. I express it in polar. And then I calculate the polar r and sine of 2 times the polar theta. You can express that as a function of xy if we remember our double angle formula, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then I remember that r sine theta is y. And ooh, if I just had an r in front of cosine theta, I could make it r cosine theta is equal to x. Well, I'm just going to multiply by r and divide by r here. So this is 2xy, wrong order, sorry, 2xy divided by r. So this is the formula in Cartesian. It's kind of ugly and random looking, but it's actually designed by polar coordinates. The reason I designed it this way is this is a function that's going to have linear growth in r. As I go out from the origin in any direction, it's going to grow linearly. It's going to be a straight line in all these different, different directions. But the, but the slope of that line is sine 2 theta, and that's going to vary as I go around. And so what we get is a kind of a Pringle kind of shape, but it's pinched at the center. It's really folded and pinched at the center. What's interesting about this function, though, is that if, let's start rotating a little bit, if you look at it along the x-axis, it looks perfectly nice. 
it's a constant. It's zero. And if you look at it along the y-axis, it's a constant. It's zero. Let's see if that makes sense with the formula. Yeah, if I put in x or y equal to zero here, this thing just dies. And I get a function that's constantly zero. Now at the origin, it's a little tricky, but let's just define it to be zero at the origin. So define to be zero at the origin, just to fill in what otherwise is a rather unpleasant gap. And in fact, if you actually just look at it here, that should be zero at the origin, because r equals zero. Okay. So the partial derivatives here, f sub x at zero, zero, that's going to be zero. And that's also going to be f sub y at 0, 0. And so if we the tangent plane formula worked here, there would be a tangent plane. And it would just be as z equals 0, because the function, the first derivative, and the second derivative are all 0 at the origin. But I hope this doesn't look like a flat plane at the origin is a good approximation of this function. That's one of the th ways you want to think about the tangent plane. Is it something that's a good approximation to this function? Well, this function is in most directions not flat at all. Look at that in this in this direction. This is I'm looking along a 45 degree direction between the axes. If we look at this line, that's an absolute value. If you look at this guy, that's a negative absolute value. That's horrible. There's definitely some pinched, creased um, corner kind of point at the origin. It should not have a tangent plane. And so we're going to have to think about that at least a little bit. It's not going to be a major object of study. We're going to have to think about that a little bit. Okay, good place to stop this video.